Uh, we are thrilled to have uh, Jake Freeman on the show for the first time uh, this afternoon to, uh, as I mentioned, discuss this and more. It's great to see you, Jake. Uh, thanks for doing this, first of all. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on the show. And I look forward to addressing many of the questions and issues. And to confirm, I am still 20. Uh, Perfect. My birthday is not for a while. <laughs> Happy birthday when it does come. Uh, let's jump right into it. Uh, I mean, maybe we can start off with just an overview here. What is the what is the long term goal maybe of Freeman Capital with MindMed? Sure. So we think there's a lot of value to be unlocked, both for the patients that MindMed can help and for the investors by really focusing on a very strategic vision that we've put forward. And that vision really focuses on cutting costs, really focusing and streamlining MindMed's operations onto really core drugs that. I think will have great potential and really help patients. And as well as kind of solve some of the issues, including latency dilution. And, you know, I think that all kind of comes back into cost cutting and essentially really streamlining MyMed's operations and, you know, bringing it forward and able to really effectuate on its goals. So continuing along those lines, let's maybe rewind the tape here a little bit. Uh, coming out of the Bed Bath & Beyond uh, concept and the Bed Bath & Beyond uh, idea, what was the attraction then? What was the, the idea behind the move towards MindMed? Sure. So one thing I, I think the news didn't really pick up as much is we actually announced the, the MindMed stuff about a week before the whole Bed Bath & Beyond thing kind of blew up and went all viral. Uh, so we were already in MindMed. Uh, and the reason for MindMed was really, well, my uncle was a co-founder there. And he certainly and we certainly kind of put our heads together and really found a really good plan forward. And we see a lot of un potential value to be unlocked there. Uh, you know, if MindMed sort of goes through with our kind of plan or some similar variation of it. So that's really where it is. I mean, I think the Bed Bath & Beyond was a passive play. Uh, you know, I put forward some ideas there as well. But, you know, MindMed is really something where it really requires a full shaking of the tree. You know, you really need to address a lot of issues across a lot of different spectrums. So that's where it's more of an activist play. Let's uh, get into it. Uh, going back to last week, we obviously had a uh, big move in MindMed shares uh, to the downside. It was September 27th. In fact, MindMed came out and announced a 7 million common share offering. Uh, how does this change your approach, I guess, going forward? And, and what do you want to say as far as uh, what the investors should be thinking at this point? I think it really shows investors that we need to have a meeting. And we need to let investors really vote and see if they really like management. I think this is sort of a really unnecessary waste of shareholder money. Uh, you're basically offering shares below cash value uh, to investors. And you're also having a warrant sweetener there. And there really is no reason for the cash raise. You know, we put forward a plan that really reduces spending. And even in their own projections, they have enough cash runway for another year and a half or so. So you know, there's really not a good reason to raise money in these markets. And I think Canaccord uh, sort of had a note saying that they thought this was a puzzling raise. And I think it really shows shareholders that we need to have a referendum on their performance and they need to be held to account. And I think also on a sort of a related note, the question really is out there is, are they really that entrenched in their own position that they, they will be willing to sacrifice shareholder value, you know, for to prevent other people from holding them accountable? That's a real question that I think they need to answer. So when it comes to, I guess, how we move forward here, I, I mean, there's been a lot of opposition to what happened, obviously, uh, going back to last week, including a letter from uh, yourself. Was there a response, I guess? And if so, what do you expect to happen, I guess, going forward from this point? Sure. So we're obviously exploring all the legal avenues. Uh, you know, I think the most common and most likely one is we're just going to call a meeting uh, and essentially vote on the issues. Uh, then some, well, the only potential positive of this share offering is that, you know, in the contract they had with the underwriters, is they agree not to sell any more shares for another 90 days. So there is a bit of a breather room now to really mount a full-on proxy campaign. And I think, you know, I think the response is, you know, Barrow has decided to sort of start pe speaking a little publicly. And I think I obviously today challenge into a debate on some of these issues. I think that could potentially have some fruitful uh, activities for shareholders as well. But I think really what goes forward here is, you know, we need to really figure out what MindMed's focus needs to be and who needs to lead it. And I think that really comes down to letting the shareholders have the ability to vote. Uh, sort of on another related note, you know, there's something called the consent solicitation. So we've been exploring that avenue, uh, but likely we're going to go straight with the meeting calling. You've highlighted a few concepts and a few ideas when it comes to uh, a path forward here. You have uh, 
a, an opportunity here to speak uh, directly to a number of uh, shareholders, Sean, one of those. Uh, what do you say here? What, what is your thoughts? What is your idea? What is your plan? And how do you see MindMed going forward here? Sure. I think the real thing here that every shareholder needs to listen to is if you are not happy with the way management is running things, if you want to see change, you know, speak up, you know, let management know. Obviously, the best solution is a negotiated settlement. Uh, you know, that's just the most practical solution. And, you know, peace is better than war. But the way you get peace is by management being aware that if they were to go to war, they will lose. So for all the people who are frustrated out there, I say write to management, you know, send them emails, send them letter, voice your opinions publicly. You know, that's really technically right now we cannot legally ask anyone to vote anyway. But, you know, I think if you if you sort of align with our ideas and sort of where we think the company needs to go, you know, make it known to management. Make, make management know that things need to change and they will need to be held accountable. Uh, there we go. Jake Freeman, Freeman Capital, a uh, obviously full disclosure uh, shareholder in the company, large shareholder in the company. We want everyone to be uh, well aware of that and understand exactly what the uh, message is going forward. Uh, listen, Jake, all the best uh, going forward. Best of luck with uh, your endeavor with this and, and others, I'm sure, in the future. We appreciate your time this afternoon. Thanks for doing this. Thank you.